confused between lithium iron phosphate and lead acid batteries, I'm breaking down their distinctions and serving up a hands-on price comparison. Watch this video to discover the perfect fit for your specific needs. We will start with the classic lead acid batteries. Life cycle. Gel and AGM lead acid batteries have about 1000 cycles if you discharge them to 50%. You can discharge them lower, but that would reduce its lifespan. Weight. They're heavier, which can sometimes be a limitation, especially in mobile setups. A typical 12 volt 100 amp hour battery will weigh 64 pounds or 29 kilograms. Efficiency. With an energy efficiency of around 85%, they're decent but not the top performers. Energy efficiency also depends on the room temperature and the charge or discharge rate. Depth of discharge. It's recommended not to discharge them below 50% for longevity. So you can only use 50 amp hours with a 100 amp hour battery. Safety. Vented lead acid batteries can emit gases if overcharged and need ventilation. Sealed lead acid batteries like gel and AGM don't need ventilation under normal conditions. Temperature. These can withstand freezing temperatures. However, their performance will suffer. C rate. Lead acid batteries have a standard C rate of 0.2 C making them less than ideal if you want to charge or discharge them at a high current. Self-discharge. Lead acid batteries self-discharge at 5 to 15% every month. We will not use this metric in our cost comparison later because it's not as relevant to include it. Remember that the lead acid battery loses energy when not in use. Cost. Their initial price is more budget friendly, making them a popular choice for many. Now let's explore the modern contender, lithium iron phosphate batteries. They have a long cycle life, about 5000 cycles under normal conditions. They are lightweight coming in at 22 pounds or 10 kilograms for a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. It is ideal for a range of applications, especially where weight is a concern. They stand out with an impressive energy efficiency of up to 99%. That means minimal energy gets turned into heat when charging or discharging. You can discharge them deeply. I recommend using 80% of the battery capacity. This means charging and discharging the battery from 10% to 90% to increase its lifespan. If you are using a 100 amp hour battery, you should use 80 amp hours. Safety is key, and lithium iron phosphate is among the safest lithium chemistries available, unlike other lithium ion batteries. These cannot be charged under freezing temperatures the battery will be permanently damaged. However, they can be discharged when it's freezing. These batteries have a high C rate of 1. This means you can charge or discharge them at a high current equal to their amp hour rating. If you want more information about C rates, I talk about it in one of my videos. Lithium batteries sell this charge at 3% per month significantly lower than lead acid. They are pricier up front, but their longevity and efficiency can offer long-term savings. Now let's look at a cost comparison between these two battery types. The price of an 8GM battery is $190 from Renergy. The price of lithium iron phosphate battery is $370 from Lithium with low temperature protection. You can find cheaper ones for $270, but without low temperature protection, which is essential if you use the battery in a cabin or a vehicle. We can immediately see that AGM is two times cheaper than its lithium counterparts. Let's adjust for the usable energy next. 
remember that you can only use 50% of a lead acid battery and 80% of a lithium battery? We will start out with the lead acid battery, which is $190 times 2, which equals 50% depth of discharge, equals $380 for 100 amp hour of usable energy. Now for lithium, $370 times 1.25, which equals 80% depth of discharge, equals $462 for 100 amp hour usable energy. Next, we need to take into account the efficiency of the battery. For lead acid, $380 times 1.18, which equals 85% efficiency, equals $448 for 100 amp hours. And for lithium, 462 times 1.01, equals 99% efficiency, equals $466 for 100 amp hours. We can see that the lithium battery comes closer and closer to the lead acid battery when it comes down to the cost per amp hour. But we are not finished yet. Now comes the big part. The amount of cycles the battery can last. We have to make these batteries last an equal amount of time to get an accurate comparison. So 5000 cycles divided by 1000 cycles equals a difference of 5. For lead acid, 448 times 5 equals $2240. And now for lithium, $466 times 1 equals $466. We can see that lithium is significantly cheaper in the long run. If you plan on using the batteries for 3 years maximum, which is one set of batteries, then you should use lead acid batteries. If you plan to use the batteries long term, you should use lithium. There are other advantages which you have not given the attention it deserves. The time it takes to order and replace lead acid batteries can be worth going for lithium batteries initially. You can charge and discharge lithium batteries with more current than lead acid batteries. Lithium batteries weigh significantly less. After those 5000 cycles from lithium batteries, the battery still has 80% of its capacity left, so you can continue using it. 5000 cycles is about 13 years, if you cycle the battery every day. However, I doubt that every battery can live longer than 10 years because of the battery management system or BMS it has inside. A few will die before they reach 10 years of age. And there will also be batteries that last longer than 15 years. Even if a lithium battery only lasts 10 years, it would still be 30% the cost of lead acid. The only downside to lithium is that you shouldn't use them when it's freezing. That's why I've used a battery that has low temperature protection. Some batteries heat themselves, so you no longer have to worry about it. I'm giving away 7 solar diagrams to make your journey easier, including wire and fuse sizes. You can find the link in the description below. Did you like this comparison? Give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials. Let me know what you think in the comments.